Do you have a LinkedIn profile? If you're like most people, you created a LinkedIn profile a few years ago, but barely ever touch it. Am I right? In this video, I'm going to give you 15 easy, powerful LinkedIn strategies you can do right now to supercharge your profile. My name is Vanessa Van Edwards, and I am the best-selling author of Captivate. My goal is to give you easy behavior hacks to level up your career, life, and success. It's estimated that one in three professionals on the planet are on LinkedIn. With that kind of reach as a professional, you can't afford not to take LinkedIn seriously. Here are my top tips for improving your LinkedIn profile and strategy. LinkedIn tip number one, post thematic updates. One of the biggest mistakes people make on LinkedIn is thinking that having a profile is enough. Reports show that less than one third of users post at least once per month, suggesting that the majority of people create their profiles and then occasionally add new connections. This is a wasted opportunity. Why? Because LinkedIn gives valuable real estate to updates. Immediately after logging into LinkedIn, your contacts get taken to their newsfeed, which is filled with recent updates. Posting regularly is an easy way to stay front of mind for your connections. Want to be a master at this? Don't just post updates, post strategically. I highly recommend picking themes for your updates. What would your network like to hear about? What fits with your brand strategy? What could help you? What could help your contacts? Here are the themes that work most often. Industry news. You attended an industry conference and gained some great insights. Share them. Insider knowledge. You read a book and learned something others in your network could benefit from knowing. Post a summary. Inspirational. You saw a quote or heard a story that inspired you and you think it could inspire others. Personal. You're working on a personal project. Sharing details about it is a great way to allow your network to get to know you outside of your job. Advice. You're looking for a specific type of connection. Do you need someone who has a particular area of expertise to help you achieve a goal? By posting about it, you prompt your connections to promote themselves or recommend others who would be a good fit. Right now, post an update. LinkedIn tip number two, be a strategic liker. Building a strong network is about making and maintaining connections. Connecting with someone after a networking event is half the battle. You want to stay front of mind and build a lasting relationship. To do this, you need to engage. Every time you go to LinkedIn, take a few moments to like a few recent posts in your newsfeed. Be purposeful about this. Don't just go around liking any and all posts. Why? This is great conversation fodder next time you see them. If you liked an article they posted, you then can talk about that article next time you see them. Bingo! Conversation starter and liker. Right now, like at least three updates from your newsfeed. LinkedIn tip number three, make your profile more than your resume. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that their LinkedIn profile is just a virtual place for them to display their resumes, which it is in part, but it's also so much more than that. Beyond the summary and job experience sections that most people focus on filling out, there's also over half a dozen other sections that showcase your interests and accomplishments in specific areas that are not featured within your job descriptions. Filling out your profile not only helps people who search for you, it also makes LinkedIn more likely to show your profile in search results. LinkedIn favors profiles that are complete. It's estimated that only 50.5% of LinkedIn users take the time to fill out every section. This means that half of users are failing to use the platform to its full potential. Here's an example of an incomplete profile that showcases why it's so important to fill out the sections of your profile with enough details to showcase who you are. If you're struggling to come up with additions or details, this is your cue to get involved with more activities that can propel your career forward. Here are a few easy ways to gain accomplishments and experiences that spice up your profile. Take a course that advances your skill set. 
we have a master communications course called People School if you want to increase your interpersonal intelligence. Volunteer with a local organization that supports your professional role or fulfills a personal passion. Join the board of a nonprofit who could use your professional expertise. Right now, complete all sections of your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn tip number four, remove all buzzwords. This tip comes straight from the LinkedIn deities. LinkedIn revealed the 10 most overused marketing buzzwords on resumes and profiles. To differentiate yourself from the other professionals in your industry, here are the top 10 most overused buzzwords and what you can use to replace them. Buzzword strategic. Replace it with calculating, decisive, or judicious. Buzzword creative. Replace it with inventive, prolific, or imaginative. Buzzword specialized. Replace it with definitive, distinguished, or niche. Buzzword leadership. Replace it with guidance, directorship, or prominence. Buzzword passionate. Replace it with lively, vitalized, or zealous. Buzzword experienced. Replace it with seasoned, sophisticated, or savvy. Buzzword focused. Replace it with immersed, engaged, or fixated. Buzzword enthusiastic. Replace it with exuberant, spirited, or animated. Buzzword expert. Replace it with virtuoso, adroit, or practiced. Buzzwords track record. Replace it with performance history, credentials, or documentation. Pro tip. To the greatest extent possible, choose words that you would feel comfortable using to describe yourself verbally. Your vocabulary reveals a lot about your personality and communication style, and you don't want to confuse people by presenting yourself in different ways online versus in person. Right now, replace those 10 buzzwords in your profile. LinkedIn tip number five, be an adder. One of the best ways to showcase your knowledge or expertise is not only to post about it, remember LinkedIn tip number one, but also to comment on other people's posts. I call this being an adder as opposed to being a subtractor. Adders, add to the knowledge of an update with an interesting anecdote, idea, or example. They add gratitude with a thank you or a supportive response. Subtractors, ignore good posts or take away from them by adding negative, unhelpful, or unsupportive comments. Which are you? If you want to impress someone, make them feel impressive by honoring their great post. Add more to it. Thank them. Give a relevant link or example. Right now, add to someone's post. LinkedIn tip number six, request smart. One of the best parts of LinkedIn is adding connections. These can be people you met in real life, colleagues, or new contacts. How you request someone to connect on LinkedIn is incredibly important. Here are some best practices for adding people as connections. Always add a personal message. Tell the individual how you know them. Don't send connection requests to people you don't know or don't have a strong reason to want to know you. If they decline your request for not knowing you, it will get marked as spam. After having a few of your requests marked as spam, LinkedIn will restrict you from trying to connect with more people. Tell them why you want to connect with them. Forgetting to do this may cause some people to decline your request because they don't know what to expect from you if they do accept. Make sure your reason is specific to the individual. General reasons show a lack of effort. Here's the difference between a vague and specific response. Vague. I'm looking for new work and thought you might have some leads. Specific. I saw that you're recruiting for X company. I wanted to reach out to see if you have any opportunities in, and then describe your profession. Give them a reason to want to connect with you. Some ways to do this include offering help to them, following up on something you spoke about in person, and or expressing your appreciation. Don't wait too long. I used to have a stack of business cards from events and would connect with everyone at the end of the month, but this was too long. People didn't always remember and it made me look like a procrastinator. Add people no more than 24 to 48 hours after you meet them. Import your email contacts selectively. I like adding your address book to LinkedIn, 
but don't add everyone. This can be spammy, and you might not even remember the people you're connecting with. Every few months, I see if I have any new contacts from my address book to add, and then send personal messages. Right now, selectively import contacts from your address book. LinkedIn tip number seven, join a network greater than your own. According to the online marketing consulting and education firm, Quicksprout, one of the most effective ways to yield a positive return for the time you spend on LinkedIn is to become active in relevant groups. When you want to build your reputation as an expert in a specific subject matter or need help from professionals in a particular niche, joining groups is often the best way to develop the relationships you're seeking. Unlike your overall network, Groups are unified around defined interests, which both gives you access to professionals who have qualities you're looking for and allows you to dive into meaningful conversation. The initial impression you make when joining a group is critical. Keep in mind these tips before posting in your group. Read the group guidelines. Some groups have restrictions on the types and topics of content they allow. Skim the most popular discussions to gain an understanding of what topics spark the most active conversations. Observe the dominant communication style. Are posts and comments formal and full of jargon? Or do people write casually as if corresponding between friends? Or is it something in between? Match that style. Don't join a group with the sole intention of promoting yourself. Yes, you'll want to yield value from the group, but you must offer value first and become a respected member before people want to do you favors. Don't promote yourself in at least your first five posts. Online marketing expert Neil Patel recommends that when you first join a group, you should begin interacting by answering questions. This is a more subtle way of establishing yourself than immediately posting and shows that you're interested in other people and helping them. Once you've participated in a few conversations, then when you start one of your own, members will be more willing to engage because you're not a stranger coming in and posing your ideas or requests. After you've engaged in a couple of discussions and offered value to the group, reach out to the members you've connected with and start building individual relationships. Right now, join a group and answer three questions. LinkedIn tip number eight, test your LinkedIn profile picture. If you're like me, you have a really hard time picking the perfect profile picture. The thing is, this is not a silly worry. Our profile picture says a lot about us. According to research published in Psychological Science, slight variations in how an individual face is viewed can lead people to develop significantly different first impressions of that person. While no one can change their face, we do have control over what the photo represents and how we want it to be perceived. I want you to test your profile picture. We partnered with a website called Photo Feeler. Photo Feeler is a free profile photo testing tool that helps people choose better profile photos by cluing them in to what their photos are really saying. I gave this tool a little spin. Here are the three photos of me and how they ranked. With the current votes, the second photo has the highest score in all three areas. So that is my current LinkedIn profile picture. How to test your LinkedIn profile picture. First, upload your photo at photofeeler.com. Second, vote on other people's photos or buy vote credits. Three, wait for your results. LinkedIn tip number nine, make someone's LinkedIn day. There's nothing better than crafting the perfect LinkedIn status update and having people like and share it with their audience. It's the ultimate show of support. When you share other people's posts, you get great social capital. In addition to showing your interests and increasing your activity level, this is a great way to show people that you're thinking about them without having to personally reach out. For example, R.B. Kelly is one of our certified Science of People body language trainers, and she shared one of her fellow trainers status updates because she knew it would be relevant to her audience as well. Win, win, win. LinkedIn tip number 10, encourage efficiency. People are busy. You're busy. Your followers are busy. And the best thing you can do is to help people engage with you in the fastest possible way. Your VIPs are especially busy on LinkedIn. 
They don't have time to spend hours every week scrolling through the platform looking for insights. So they're drawn to posts that deliver the most information while demanding the least amount of their time. This fact is supported by LinkedIn's own research. They found posts featuring statistics and links to articles for more information receive a 37% higher click-through rate than those that don't feature statistics. Individuals who crafted posts that were 150 characters or less, often with an accompanying link, received an 18% increase in engagement rate. Word choice can have a dramatic effect on how your post is perceived. Their research found vast variations in engagement rates between posts that were identical, with the exception of one or two keywords. While there's no magic formula to choose the right ones, you should carefully consider the connotations of your words to make sure they appeal to your target audience. The easiest way to do this is to mimic the jargon that your target audience uses to describe themselves and what they do. If you write articles, tell your audience exactly what they're getting. People don't want to waste time by clicking on an article, getting a few paragraphs in, and realizing it's not relevant to them at all. Before writing anything, ask yourself, will what I post directly add value to the people who read it? Right now, punch up your posts, make them catchy, or delete them. LinkedIn tip number 11, optimize for your audience. Your profile should be geared towards the right people, not all people. Think about your target audience or demographic. Who are your people? Your target audience that you need to appeal to is the group of people whom you're dependent on to become more successful. Here are a couple of examples. If you're climbing your industry's ladder, you need to prove to your peers and superiors that you are the right fit for advanced opportunities. If you're a freelancer, your target audience is not other freelancers, it's the clients you hope to gain. If you're looking to switch industries, be on top of everything happening in that industry you want to transition to. Share what you learn and contribute to online discussions about that industry to prove that you would be an asset to a company in that space. Also, remove jargon from your current career that will confuse recruiters in an industry you're transitioning to and tailor your descriptions to match the needs of your ideal job. If you're looking to form connections with a particular type of person, address them directly so they know you want them to reach out to you. Insider tip. If you want people to reach out to you, make sure your profile includes your preferred contact information. By default, you likely have your email displayed, but if your inbox is consistently overloaded and social media is a more effective way to get in touch with you, mention that. Right now, tailor your profile for your people and consider adding contact info. LinkedIn tip number 12, focus on your industry. According to LinkedIn, over 60% of users are interested in posts about industry insights. Whether you set aside time to do research and create original posts, or you opt to share the posts of industry experts, updating your connections about your industry rather than your career is an effective way to increase your influence. Doing so proves that you're up to date in your industry or that you're someone is well informed and would be great to work with. It also allows you to provide value to your connections who will then associate you with the benefits they gain from the knowledge you share. If you opt to write articles, here are some tips to get you started. Search engine optimization and online marketing expert Paul Shapiro analyzed 3,000 articles on LinkedIn and discovered these trends among the most popular posts. Write how and list posts. These types of articles directly convey the value that readers are going to get from them and outperform other types. Provide in-depth insights about your subject. Readers on LinkedIn appreciate content that teaches them valuable information for their careers, and that requires some length. The most successful posts are between 1,900 and 2,000 words. Include images. Articles with eight images receive the most average number of views. Rein in your passion. While you may have strong feelings regarding an industry event that you're analyzing, it's best to keep your emotions to yourself. Content with a neutral tone outperform pieces with a positive or negative one. 
Focusing on the facts and objective analysis will build your reputation as a competent professional and prevent you from alienating peers with different opinions. Right now, write one article for your industry. LinkedIn tip number 13, don't give, don't take, match. One study found that individuals report gaining the most value from LinkedIn when they focus on sharing professional resources, not directly on building themselves up. The reason for this stems from the desire that most people have to foster reciprocal relationships. Organizational psychology researcher Adam Grant studied over 30,000 professionals across multiple industries and found that the majority of people have a sharing mentality. They're willing to offer value to others with the expectation that other people will offer value in return. There are also people on both ends of the extreme, givers who constantly go out of their way to help others without asking for anything in return and takers who relentlessly pursue their goals without regard for the people they use along the way. Grant found that the people in both of those groups tend to be less successful than the people who strive for fairness, otherwise known as matchers. Givers fail because they focus so much on other people, they run out of time and energy to improve their own careers. If this sounds like you, keep in mind that people expect you to occasionally ask for help and do some self-promotion. It doesn't make you a burden to others. Takers fail because matchers turn against them. They don't like people who constantly ask for help and promote their own self-interest without taking time to also support others. On LinkedIn, this dislike translates into people refusing to engage with takers both on and offline. Here are specific ways to give back to your network and prove you're not a taker. Be the bridge between people. If you have two or more connections who are looking for people like each other, introduce them. Endorse the people you've had successful working relationships with. Do more than click to endorse your connection skills and take a few minutes to write a sincere testimonial about their abilities and character. Share your insights. If you're an expert on a particular topic, share information that's relevant to your overall network and respond to questions related to it. Right now, introduce two people who you think should know each other. LinkedIn tip number 14, masterful networking. You could have a flawless LinkedIn profile with every section filled out with standout accomplishments, 500 plus connections, and dozens of skill endorsements. And it will all mean little if you don't keep in touch with your connections. The biggest mistake people make on LinkedIn is you meet someone in real life, connect with them on LinkedIn, and then a year later expect them to help you get a job at their company when you suddenly find yourself looking for new work. So you want to keep in touch with everyone, but if you have hundreds of connections trying to keep in touch with you, it can seem a little daunting. However, you only need to keep in touch with professional connections once every month to stay relevant in their minds, which you can do in just a few minutes a day. Here are a few quick ways to stay in touch. Congratulate people on promotions and when their company is featured in the news for something positive. The easiest way to do this is to check your LinkedIn notifications to see who has found new work or been promoted recently and set up Google alerts to hear news about the companies your connections work for. When you travel, let people know you're in their city and invite them to go out for coffee. Be a professional matchmaker. Introduce people to someone new. Once a month, look at your LinkedIn contacts and status updates and see if you can make any new connections. Pass along helpful information. This could be content, new job opportunities, or networking events. Want to learn more of my networking strategies? I have an entire guide for my 10 steps to being a master networker. LinkedIn tip number 15, relevant people. Want to know if your LinkedIn effort is paying off? Want to know how you're coming across? There's an overlooked section of your LinkedIn profile that most people ignore. It's the people also viewed section on the right-hand side of your profile. This updates all the time based on what people who are searching for you are also looking at. For example, here is mine today. I was shocked to see this. 
I never know what kind of profiles people are looking at compared to mine, but I was pleasantly surprised to see this list. This info is extremely useful if you know how to leverage it. Who does LinkedIn think is related to you? Are you being paired with people in your similar industry, with your similar title? Do you like who you're being paired with? You can get an idea of who LinkedIn thinks you are by who they pair you with and then either leveraging it or changing it. For example, if you sell software and notice you're being paired with a lot of people in software, this might be good or bad. Would you prefer sales or tech? You can change wording in your profile and your contacts to fit more with your goal. Can you connect? If they're coming up in your related search, you're likely coming up in theirs too. Can you connect with them? I have reached out to big VIPs who come up in my related search and said, I saw you come up in my people also viewed section of LinkedIn. I thought we should connect since we seem to be in similar circles. It's a great motivation to connect. Who is looking? You might also be able to make some guesstimations on who is viewing your profile in a given day. For example, I do a lot of spokesperson work and had a sneaking suspicion that was changing my people also viewed section. Sure enough, my manager got an email today from a company wanting to do a spokesperson deal. My guess is her and her media agency were looking around. I also guess that they are also considering Whitney Wolf Heard, Marie Forleo, and Melanie Chandra for the deal. Now I know who else is in the running. Right now, see who you are paired with and take action. Phew, well that was a lot of tips. If you just do one or two of these, you will be better off. Have a few LinkedIn tips of your own? Share them below. Remember, no step is too small. The baby steps are the ones that get you going. Oh wait, don't go. You might also like these videos. Hmm, that one's really good. Watch it now.